Good morning, professional photographers of Idaho. I am Bob Ryder, and I have a very special guest with me today. You, yeah, I'm special. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you tell us your name? My name's Brenda Leap, and I'm with Leap Photography here in Boise, downtown Boise. And your shirt says what you do. Yes, weddings, weddings events, and portraits. So what kind of portraits do you love? Uh, most, well, I love headshots, families, high school seniors, mostly. Okay. And I'm leaning more towards events recently, partially because of COVID and partially just a change of pace. I get that. <laughs> what kind of events? Uh, you ever really, shoot bat mitzvah? I've not photographed a bat mitzvah. I have, you know, birthday parties, yeah. high school reunions, large corporate events. Uh, I love, so large corporate events are in our wheelhouse. I love them. Yeah, they're fun. There's always food. <laughs> well, there's, there's And there's that. always coffee. <laughs> but you also meet a lot of really interesting people. You really do. And uh, just the people watching and the conversations you have with people are far more interesting than at a wedding. I know that sounds strange, No, but... it doesn't. And, the, and the, <laughs> so I've got wedding. I've got, you know, back in the day, I used to shoot weddings. I enjoy weddings, actually. I, I love them. Um, but I don't love that wedding photographer culture. Um, well, it's, it, it's pretty kitschy. It, it can be, mm, but it it's, a, it's a really high stress environment as well. Yeah. And I think, you know, most people, be it you are a decor person or a photographer, you get burnt out on it after a while. You need to step back and mm -hmm. explore some different things. Yeah, our biggest thing right now, so we do headshots, of course. Um, but our biggest thing right now, my best-selling product is uh, is corporate composites. Mm, yeah. And um, it, what I think, I think what I love about that is, do you remember uh, you shoot strobes? Yes. And we're going to get heavily into she shoots strobes because she's got a lot of gear. She didn't even bring it with her today. We just did some slides for it because crazy. You've got a lot of gear. I um, do. <laughs> but but one of the things that I love about strobes over continuous light is the magic factor. The magic, oh, just the surprise of what happens after it goes boom. Yeah, because they're seeing, <laughs> they're seeing the studio and then, foof, you make an image and they're like, how did you do that? And I'm like, well, it's magic. Do you magic people? I want to know. <laughs> Let's go over here real quick. And uh, audio's looking good. Feed's looking pretty strong. Let's see who's on. We've got my wife watching. She says, good morning, Brenda and morning. Bob. Morning. And... Um, I don't know what she said that is so true to. The magic? Are we magicking people? She likes the magic too. Or that I'm special. <laughs> <laughs> well, you started with that, so I'm, I, well, you are special. You know, In many uh, ways. I'm gonna, I'm gonna back out for just a minute and, I, and, just, and just say that, and I told you this personally, directly, a moment ago, we need more of you. I, right? and, I, 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 and, I, and I know, like life has, has Life has been life for a lot of us, yes. right? And, um, but you add so much value to our community. Um, Thank you. If you don't know Brenda, make it a point to get to know her. Because that's, I mean, really, that's what PPI is about, right? Um, is. And this is kind of the PPI thing that we do at the end. Like, I'm not I'm gonna ask you to join at the end, all those things. But, but really, this is about community. And I, I think I met you first at a chamber function. I think it was. I think it was a Meridian Chamber mm -hmm. event. Like I don't know, seven, seven years ago, eight years, five, six. Uh, I don't know, a long been, time ago. Pre-COVID. Oh, well, pre-COVID. So. Pre <laughs> but hi, I'm a photographer. I'm a photographer too. Hey, let's talk. Oh, anyway, so that's how we first met, and it was like people were like, "What? Well, didn't you just? Isn't she a photographer too?" I'm like, "Yeah." They're like, "Isn't she your competition?" I'm like, "No." Yeah, oh, I mean, you're in Meridian, I'm in downtown Boise, but it is nice to have photographer friends. thing and still not be in competition with one another. There's certainly enough business <laughs> in this area that, yeah. And we attract different clientele, too. Each yeah. personality attracts uh, I think that's so important. Um, I'm going to throw on Laquita's here. She says, good morning. I'm going to throw that back up there. Hi, Boom, Laquita. good morning, Laquita. Have you met Laquita? I have. Um, I met so her sweet. at convention. I was checking people in. Oh, you were. That's on right. On Lindsay Adler Day. Awesome. 
So. And uh, what did you think about bringing Lindsay Adler to Idaho? To come to Idaho, that was really awesome. I, it, and the and thing about Lindsay is, because uh, I have been to a lot of conventions and a lot of classes, she explains things in a very simplified way. So yeah, that, like that's, in a real human way. Yeah so, yeah, so anybody can understand it. So, for example, I had seen her on a Wednesday, and then I went up to Washington, and I saw someone else, and they were talking about lighting, and they were trying to turn it into a gigantic math puzzle, and there were people at my table like, what the heck is this person <laughs> talking about? And I'm the just like... The first time you take math to creatives, <laughs> poof, the eyes glaze over. Yeah, and, and I'm just like... Two stops brighter. That's all he's trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> and there and there is math into that. And there's people whose brains work that way. Mine kind of leans that way too. But the reality is, uh, I'm like, all right, take two steps back. Perfect. Yeah. I mean, I could have mathed it. I could have made those adjustments. But I'm like, hey, man, take two steps back. Perfect. Things like that. <laughs> and I mean, just explaining to a creative anything, yeah, like you said, anything that's mathematical, we don't think that way. We, like me in particular, I, I visualize my camera more. It's like, oh, I gotta, like the old days, move your F stop. Two, click, click, click. two and, clicks, two stops. And you stops. know what? <laughs> one, of my, one of my friends was here this week, and um, he, just, he just came back from vacation. He's not a professional shooter although he's a very advanced enthusiast. And uh, he was on vacation, actually wasn't vacation. He went to go do something down in Southern California and he came back, he's like, did you know? And he's a Nikon guy. He's like, did you know there's a new ring on the back of the lens that controls the aperture? I'm like, just like that. I mean, like, <laughs> if you've been shooting for like the last 10 years, that's foreign to you. There's an, an aperture ring on the Lens, right, if you right? just started. But I've been shooting since the 80s, and that's where the aperture ring was. It's yeah, it was lens. always right next to the camera body and shutter right there. And yeah, you didn't do anything on the back of a screen. There was no screen. Right, there was no screen. <laughs> I, you had um, to use your, your I brain. I have my, my Canon EOS 1V, which is Canon's last professional film body. It looks, it's, a, it's an EOS 1 series camera. Mm -hmm. So all of the 1Ds that came after it with all of their various marks and designations, still look like my 1V, right? So I was shooting that at a Cameras and Cocktails event at Bambi Kentrell Studio, um, Benicia, California. This is years ago. and um, But I was shooting film because... Well, well, that's what I'm, we did back I, then. I don't... No, no, no. <laughs> oh, this so was, you were in the transition period. You no, know. I was just shooting film for fun because, oh. you know, I don't do that whole everybody shooting over the shoulder, shooting the model that, the, you know, I don't do that much, but I was shooting film because I thought it was just going to be fun. And uh, I get to the end of the roll of film, and it, it rewinds. And the photographer gal next to me, she's like, oh, what is that? What's wrong I'm with like, your camera? I'm like, my film's rewinding, <laughs> right? She's like, film? I'm like, ugh. Well, you know, Bambi oi, oi, Cantrell is someone I actually, when I lived in Montana, she came up there, and she is a phenomenal teacher of posing. So that's what this was. She was posing this wonderfully tall, lanky, milky white skinned model in her natural light studio. Um, and by natural light, I mean she has like 20 foot tall windows. It used to be like this military base. They had these big fantastic lead paint windows. Anyway, yeah, that, was, that was a lot of fun. She's a neat gal. She's just she a nice human. She is. Right? All right, so we've covered, uh, well, we've covered a little bit of ground here. Yeah, My wife we... says about Lindsay, she says I could even understand what Lindsay was talking about. Yeah, very, very basic And my wife's not a photographer, right? I mean, she supports me here. She knows a lot more than she lets on to. Um, I offered to buy her an R5. She's like, you just want a second R5. <laughs> like, well, I think it'd be great to have, if you had an R5. Anyway, she, like, she didn't buy that for anything. Yeah, it sounds like my dad <laughs> trying to buy my mom a motorcycle, and she's like, yeah, you want it not. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, so let's do, I've got a couple of announcements we need to come down to. Sure. Let me move into the rundown a little bit. And I'll pop the audio off on that so that I can bring a slide in. I just want to talk about, uh, this is going to come up next. Um, this is the end of the month, right? It is. This is the last Friday. Yeah. So next week, um, next Friday is our monthly lunch social. Yes. For professional photographers of Idaho. And this is a low-stress, 
come as you are, t-shirt and cut off shorts, flip flops, get your pizza at the pizza place and um, sit down and just hang out. Kind of, right. kind of deal, right? Yeah. I've so, been, oh, as you know, I've been multiple times. Yeah. yeah. I've brought a friend, photographer. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, I brought a guy a couple weeks ago, Darren, and uh, he has since joined PPI and since benefited from the membership. He needed some equipment uh, for a shoot that's kind of a one-off for him, and he was able to tie into some folks and get some stands. And anyway, really good stuff. Um, well, at the very least, it is a place that... Um, you can go, and if you have, I don't know, a question about something you're not quite sure how to navigate, uh, whatever the situation may be, equipment or client issue, mm -hmm. you can ask opinions of someone else who works in well, your and industry. The, and it's not a formal class environment, so you're not right. like, um, I need to be the center of attention. You can kind of pick on the person that you want to pick their brain. Like, anyway. Uh, I had yeah. a great time. We had uh, uh, Brian Welsh and Aaron Hockley here recently. Mm -hmm. You were the. Yep. yep, I've seen them many times, but um, I, yeah. Alan Ansel was there. I don't. And you're in the same building as Alan. I, I see Alan all the time. I love Alan, right? <laughs> so somebody said to me the other day, I'm like, oh, I just met Alan. I'm just, like, oh, you just met a treasure, right? Because he, he's got this depth of information. Anyway. He does. And he photographs things that people would not think he photographs. Yeah, but, like yeah. rock stars and stuff, like yeah. the music festival. And the Tree Fort, uh, Tree Fort bands, he does quite a bit of that. So. I think that's so awesome. I know right? that people look at Alan and they don't think that that would be Alan, but well, yeah, he's, he does you it. Know, he's no spring chicken, right? And that's, well, and that's the turkey talking right there. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm not a spring chicken either. Um, uh, let's come I'm back to the announcement here real quick. I just want yes. to say, um, so we have two luncheons next week. Uh, one is going to be here in Meridian on Fairview Avenue at Idaho Pizza Company at 1 p.m. Um, and we have to push out to one because we run this until sometimes a little after 12. We've got a great topic for you next week as well. And then uh, the Hammonds have volunteered to host over at Cedric's in uh, Idaho Falls at noon. So okay. I'm excited that our east side folks get together as well as us, you know, I, capital folks. I don't know how you'd want to put that. Um, Treasure I, Valley. Treasure Valley. But, <laughs> you know, our state is so geographically oblongish that it's hard to get people together. So yes. if, you're, if you're in that southeast side, go hang out and have lunch with people, all right? Get together, gather, because that's really the essence of what we do is uh, is just bringing bringing you community. Yes. Right of like-minded people. All right. So I've said that. Let's see what's next on the agenda. I want to talk about uh, the retreat. This is a big deal. We've got retreat coming up. I'm going to slide this over. Look, boom, slide it right in. <laughs> uh, I really like the slide for some reason. Um, our fall retreat is coming up September 22nd through the 25th ish. Um, some folks will probably leave the evening of the 24th if they don't plan to shoot the 25th. 25th is the Saturday. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. 25th Sunday, is Sunday. That's what I'm trying to say. You know. <laughs> I you know. know. I if you've been not, watching, you know. I know. I will not be there. I have a shoot in Pocatello, so. You know, and uh, kind of takes I know Katrina can't make it. She's got a big shoot that weekend. And, you know, this is, folks, this is life. Like, the, the first thing uh, I've got, we're, we're headed to Salt Lake, uh, in a couple of weeks for a volleyball tournament. My son plays on a National League uh, competitive volleyball, and it's it's a Friday-Saturday thing, and then I was just asked to bid a job for Sunday. I'm like, okay, I bid the job. I bid the job where I needed the job to be for me to go out of my way to get back. And rush from, back, yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't get the job. I don't <laughs> I go, okay. That's, yeah, I feel like that's, that's fun. fine. I have more time um, right. in Salt Lake. So we've got more time <laughs> to just do our thing, and, uh, and that's great. But... Um, our fall retreat in, in Baker City, Oregon is, is, like I said, that weekend, that week, it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then a lot of folks will probably stay Sunday because there's a lot of things outside of Baker City that might draw your attention if you like to shoot um, old, fun, gold rush era things. So Baker City, Oregon is a turn of the century, like late 1800s uh, town. It's a really cute town. It's so cool. Oh, just pull, so I grew up, uh, some of you know, some of you don't. I grew up in, in, in New England. I grew, grew up outside Boston in a home that was built in the 1700s. And old for us back there, like antique stuff from there is from the 1600s. 
Sure. Uh, antique stuff here is from the 1800s. <laughs> yeah. And um, but I love that era. Like that was an untamed. That was a wild, lawless time. That was find and stick a claim. You know, I'm like the claim. Uh, anyway. Yeah, yeah, it's a. I think it's worth going just to check out downtown Baker City. I, I really dig downtown Baker. It's I'm so glad to cute. have you say that. So you're the first person here who's been like, yeah, I've been down down Baker City. Yeah. It's really neat. We've got it's these really cool. these uh, like 1800 facades on these storefronts. The Geisler Hotel, Geisler Grand is down there. I think that's what Larry's using in our graphic. Is that the peak yes, from the Geisler Grand? Um, but a lot of the buildings um, are from that era. The, the street is super wide because it's sort of like when you go to Salt Lake, they, you wanted to have multiple uh, horse and buggies to be able to go by each uh, other. It's just got a lot of history. Super cool. And I think it's worth stopping in at, you know. Yeah. So I want to say this. Um, we've got there, we are not room blocking in a singular hotel because um, we felt that it, it gives people a lot of flexibility to come and be who they are, how they want to be. Um, I found rooms for as low as 70 bucks a night for a queen room. Um, there isn't much more than room for, for you and your suitcase, but it's clean uh, at one place. And then we found some nicer places up towards the $200 mark. And uh, Larry and I are both pulling travel trailers up and staying Ooh. at the A-Frame RV uh, resort. And the, it's, that is a locally owned by a, a, a couple with great staff. And we, we literally spent time with these folks. They've got it. And I, I, I'm renting the spot that has the like the barbecue gazebo picnic mm. table thing so next to it. So you're going to be the party headquarters? Well, I don't, I'm not really a party guy, <laughs> well, but I'm a gather guy. We'll call it gather, party gather. Yeah, gather. Bring whatever beverage makes you happy, bring it. That's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so that's that. That's what I've got for announcements. And then okay. the next thing that I want to do, let me swing this over here so you can see it. We're going to talk about our, our title slide. We're 11.17. We're about uh, five minutes past what I like to do. Oh, but I can talk fast. <laughs> well, and so you have a, just a great kit. Um, I spend time with each of these What's in My Bag episodes that we do. Um, I'm going to just bring that over. With all these What's in My Bag episodes that I do, I, uh, I get a list by the photographer from, from email. And then I populate and I make slides out of it so that you can see. Right. Um, what they've got while they're talking faster, you can go back and review it or, and pause and see, oh, I didn't realize she had it in her bag. I totally missed when she talked about that, right? That kind of thing. Or do a screenshot. That's always, you know, and you yeah, can look you can at it later. Yeah, you can screenshot your way through it. Um, one of the nice things is because we moved to YouTube, you've got the ability to replay. Yes. And we're broadcasting in 1080p, so you're going to be able to see everything nice and clear. Um, it's just a, a good presentation over there. And if you're like me, I like to speed watch episodes of stuff that I really, and then slow it down. So in your settings, if you're watching YouTube, you can speed them up to like 2x. You can't really understand them. <laughs> uh, but like at 1.5 to 1.75, I can understand. I talk fast. I almost talk like I'm in 1.25. But you can speed up an episode and watch your way through it really quick and slow down to the points that you want to catch. Yes. Um, and that's that one of the, the things thing I love. YouTube. I always rewatch our episodes. I'm always trying to fine tune this and make it better for you folks. Um, uh, I spent some time on the audio last week so that we're not dis distorting. And um, Wonderful. Anyway, some neat stuff there. Okay, so you so, want me to, to start? You're going to bring I, up this slide? I'm going to bring slide. up this slide. So let me, let me drag that across. We'll go boom. Okay. Brenda Leap is going to get out her low pro rolling bag. It's actually on a stand next to her, right? It's pretty big. It, it's I, too big to put on the table. I think it is too big. And yeah, so anyway, so low pro. You're um, going to start digging through. Um, let's, what shall we start with? Um, well, pull out your camera body. That's the first thing on my list. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to come out. back. We'll start with. Um, I'm going to come back to camera two one. Things. Oh. Bring it in. All right. Okay. So what are you shooting? I have recently converted, I shouldn't say converted, switched over to mirrorless. So j beginning of June, I went to an R6 okay. from, a, from a Canon 60. So right. I went R6 because I don't do video. I don't need a 45 megapixel image for pretty really anything that I'm shooting and producing. So I'm like, you know what? The R6 is less expensive. 
It, it is has less expensive. Everything what, $1,000 less, $1,300 less than our It is about 1300 yeah. And so what I did, I'm like, you know what? I can buy another lens with that. So I can start my mirrorless lens because I am really minimal. You will find out today with what I have in my bag. I'm going to for say, for actual I, camera gear. Can I call bullshit? <laughs> <laughs> I, well, <laughs> my lighting setup is very extensive, but my camera gear is actually very minimal. Okay. <laughs> I, I think, think it that is. you're going to find that <laughs> she's not being truthful. Well, it, I feel it, it's so, minimal. So what you're saying is there's more stuff you'd like to have and carry that mm, you just don't? No, I pretty much because I get a camera. Because we had somebody here the other day, they like, here's my camera, here's my three lenses. I got memory cards and batteries. There you go. Right, that's not you. I mean, essentially what I'm shooting with is kind of a camera and a couple lenses. Okay. I, I essentially use two lenses. So one ever. of the things that, and I'm going to do a pullback a little bit here. I think oh, they'll yeah. be able to see it better. I actually have the, um, the adapter on. So this is an EF lens. An EF lens with the RF adapter. It's the EF to RF adapter. Um, and that Those was are about hundred bucks, aren't they? Mm, yeah, this one I think was about ninety nine, mm -hmm. hundred. They do have the option if you want to go old school and have your uh, shutter the control speed. ring on yeah, it. Yeah, I'm like. Well, They've got uh, an option for a slip and filter at the back, which is useful if you're using certain types of lenses. Right. Which it, those are all things I knew I was never going to use. Yeah. So. Um, so let me ask you this: Do you have a plan to go to the RF lenses? Yes, I will convert. I just um, I've been. You got to sneak up on that. That's expensive. <laughs> it is. I yeah. mean, the lenses are like twenty five hundred dollars. Yeah, it's not a, a minimal expense. So I'm like, this lens is still working, and I have to keep it anyway because my backup is my Canon oh, right. 6D. So, so I mean, I I don't want to be lugging around a lot of stuff. So, so when you wind up with a surplus EF mount lens, I have. Uh, so one of the things that I didn't calculate when I so I made this transition a year ago. It was May, um, and it. And I'm running, so the two cameras we've got running today are the R5 mm -hmm. with the RF7200 and the EOS R with the 24-105 F4. Uh, and uh, folks, which that is a great lens. Oh my gosh. Um, I have that lens too, which I'll pull out in a moment. Okay. And I have it in the EF and the RF. And I had and the EF and I was like, it, it was a good lens but not a great lens. I never bought the Mark II series version of that. I always had the, the original. Um, but the yeah. RF, the RF 24-105 fixed F4L kit lens is an awesome, yeah, awesome it lens. It covers, you know, honestly, sometimes I that is the only lens I'll, if I go to an event or a, right. maybe even a wedding, you can have that lens and get through the entire day with yep, that lens. Yeah, you really lens. can. You really can. Um, so uh, with this lens, the 70-200. My wife to didn't two, hear that, but. <laughs> you can. <laughs> the 70-200, to 200, I use that a lot for headshots, senior portraits, more just single. Uh, single people in an image. Okay. Um, individuals. Individuals, yeah. And uh, right now, I have this is a. It's a really right things. Really right stuff. Really right stuff. Yes, it's the uh, tripod mount. I like that. It's the so L bracket, right? So that you can right? go L bracket. And it, it's Arca. And it's Arca. On both sides. On both sides, because wow. I personally want to stay <clears throat> at the exact same orientation. I don't want to use the ball. And then go down, I and I lose. Ring. I use the ring. I just pivot with the ring. But there's real merit in this too. And then the other thing that this L bracket here. Let's hold that up right here. Yes. I'm gonna punch into this camera. I'm gonna swing us over, and then we're gonna just drop in really tight to show you what she's talking about here. So it's here to here. So either side can mount into the tripod head. Mm -hmm. And it is the Arca Swiss mount. Yeah, that's so convenient. Um, which I've moved everything to Arca, and in fact, one of the things that I love about my uh, my spider Let's holster mounts, um, yeah, let me hold that. I'm I not just want to show right this part right here. Oh. Um, yeah, so I just catch the light on it because it's black on black. But you you guys get the idea. That's an uncomfortably close point of view, so <laughs> we'll uh, we'll pull back from that. And then. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to put your list back up, and then I'm going to pop us in the corner. Yeah, I would say the other thing, um, so it is that I use in the studio, and honestly, I'll be honest, for years and years and years, I have not used a tripod. Yeah. I just bought a new tripod. It finally just came this week. I have not used my tripod because it's 25 years old. It is, I weighed it the other day. <laughs> it was 12, it is 12 pounds. I still have it. 
but I switched to a newer tripod that's only five pounds. And let me tell you, uh, it's okay, a huge so, difference. So I have to tell you, and you're <laughs> sitting here right here in my room, right? Like, so let's pull this out here like this. Um, do you see these tripods? Mm -hmm. These are pre-84 Bogan Made in Italy tripods. Yeah. I have four of them. Well, this was, <laughs> it's a Bogan tripod, yeah, so for, so I, I bought it in. Is it look like that? No, it is, it, no. No. But it is Cause. heavy, <laughs> and that's why I never used it, because it was just too yeah. much. Heavy's great in the studio, heavy sucks on the road. It was even um. sucking in the studio, <laughs> so I wasn't <laughs> using it. So I run, I, I, should, I should do an episode sometime about our, about our tripods, because I've, I've got some really unique stuff going on here with uh, the tripods. I've got uh, four of these uh, pre-84 Bogan uh, tripods. They're made in Italy. Two of them have leg extensions, and all four of them have matching ball heads on them. And, Which the uh, matching heads is really important. And then the two things, that I, in the two that I use in the studio, have the auto dolly underneath them. You press a lever and the whole thing raises up onto wheels, and, uh, and you can reposition it. I shoot it on wheels. And as my client moves, instead of like, oh, can you move to the left? Can you move to the left? Can you move to the left? I just, just sweep my camera. Yeah, it's you can amazing, do the same right? thing with the lighter tripods now. You can just move it a little. That's the thing. Yeah. Those old ones, once you, you know, if it's 12 pounds before you put any camera so, gear on it, it's so just. So those in the corner over there, those go to eight feet. They put my camera at eight feet. Yeah, so, so I will be keeping event. that particular tripod <laughs> for when I have, um, I do ICOMS, the uh, College of Osteopathics. Yeah, yeah. Um, we do a, a large right group. Here in Meridian. Yes, yeah. and they have usually around 170 kids per class, and we do class photos every year. And because I'm short, <laughs> I put that tripod as high as I can get it so yeah. that I can be shooting down a little bit. That's so how you get your plane of focus in, right? It's well, also, it helps with those kids who are a little shorter. If I were on ground level, I'd lose them. But if I get a little <laughs> higher, I have a better chance of seeing them. Yeah. Risers or not. Yeah. Um, but so anyway, yeah, I have that right, really right things bracket on when I'm in the studio or shooting studio work. If I'm out on location, I have a rapid strap okay. that attaches on. It's crossbody. You just screw that in. It is, yeah, it screws okay. in here on the bottom. I have a rapid strap too and I don't love it just because it's swingy. It is swingy, but you know, sometimes, but it works for you. It, well, like when I do a wedding, I need to lean down and fluff the dress and I just kind of swing it back so okay. the camera's so on my back. Around. Yeah, exactly. That's why I went to this. I, I, I tried with the, uh, the rapid strap. I like the rapid strap concept, and yours it looks a lot more contemporary than mine. Um, I think I I've, have like a G1 version. Like, Not actually sure what model this one is, but it's when they first started making them for women. So it's a little smaller oh. and designed more for a woman's body. Okay. That might also be why it looks different. And for me, because if I am out on location, I have. Um, let's, yeah, it's a uh, camera card, but it's yeah. held down so it doesn't move with a safety pin. Because otherwise smart, right? it was moving back your, and forth. Right? So that way if I need to, I always have camera cards right here up on my chest. LaCrina's um, got a question for us. Sure. Um, all right, my wife makes a comment, something about Bob absolutely loves his studio tripods. She's absolutely right. Um, I have a, a passion for these tripods because anyway, you don't really care. Um, Laquita's question is, uh, which tripod is the most recommended or used in the group? I'm not. It says now super happy with mine, but I think maybe you're saying you're not super happy with yours. So I can tell you what I just bought. So tell us. Um, so I bought the Manfrotto Pro 190X, I think is what okay. it's called. I know it's a 190. So the center column, uh, you can push it up. And then it, the center column will go out. Extend over? Yeah, extend over. So like if I'm doing copy work or something on mm -hmm. the ground, it works great for that. And then I bought it with a Ben, is it Ben Pro, Ben Row? Ben Row. Ben Row ball head, okay. which has the Arca Swiss mount. Yep. So that's what I went with. And the whole combination is, like I said, five pounds. And I mean, after 11, 12 pounds, that's... I think, the best thing uh, ever. Laquita, I think that you'll find there isn't one tripod that's in common use. There's a lot of really good stuff out there. Um, Benro is top of the line stuff. Um, I've, I've had a Vanguard tripod. I still have it. 
Um, that's my flexi bendy. Um, yeah, it, so the thing about like Manfrotto now um, and Benro is when you buy it, you're buying a tripod that will literally last you for life. Like I said, that Manfrotto, I still have it. It's 25 years old. There is nothing wrong with it. It just doesn't, it's too heavy for me. Yeah. It just doesn't fit my I current think that's uses. Fair. So, I think that's fair. Um, you know, if you aren't going to use a tripod much, get a cheap one, one that you only, you know, yeah, you don't have to spend big on a tripod. Yeah, a lot you of, could get a tripod I, for 50 um, bucks. I don't always shoot tripod for headshots. I do when I have multiple people coming, and I need to be very consistent. Right. Um, but uh, I am trying to make myself use it more all the time because I do have carpal tunnel and some joint issues, and honestly, yeah. it's just kind of saving. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah, right? <laughs> like It's about saving my body at this point. Um, Okay, so I'll move on to I think a lot little... of folks can relate to that. Yeah, you get older you know, and things just start to hurt. Well, and you know what? <laughs> um, one of the reasons I downside, and Larry is really to blame for a lot of this. I'm going to blame this on you, Brother Larry. He's out on the road today. He he uh, he had to go to Weezer for something. Did I say that right? Weezer? Weezer? I Weezer? think I'm not from Idaho originally, so okay. that's how I say it. Uh, he headed out to Weezer for something today and because um, I had given him the option to host with you so that I could be off to the side producing. Uh, um, but uh, where was I going with that? I lost my point. We're talking about tripods. Well, just I, I think that oh <laughs> no 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 we're talking about weight and downsizing oh, weight. and and Larry has taken that pretty extreme using the uh, yes. the, the M series bodies and tiny lenses and I'm like dude that thing's tiny and people are like you can't get pro pictures with that and he's like hold my. Here's the my thing. <laughs> this is, what, what makes a picture professional is the person behind the camera yeah. and the skills that they use to get those yeah. images. It's not the gear. The gear is just a tool, and that's what's so... It drives me crazy when people come up to me at an event and are like, wow, you have a very nice camera. You, you must, must get awesome photos. <laughs> yeah, right. it's because the I camera. know what I'm doing. Like, uh, <laughs> I could walk into a commercial kitchen and... Not be a great chef. Exactly, but just because I have a commercial kitchen doesn't mean anything. Um, um, I drive a Corvette. Makes me a great mechanic. <laughs> yeah. So then, <laughs> the, the, I'll keep us on track. Cute chuckle. <laughs> well, I have dimples too. We'll call that. Um, so <laughs> these are. Uh, but so this is Coming the in. EF. Uh, 24 to 105, so I still have that from my 6D, which is my backup camera. And, let's, let's and here's be the RF. Six D as in David. Six D as in David. Not the 60. Yes, six D as in David. Okay. Um, and then this is the RF 24 to 105. So that's for the mirrorless. I mean, obviously, I could put this on the mirrorless too with the adapter, but um, this is more if I have to have two cameras out. I've, you know, I've got two lenses that I can use. So I've got those two in my bag. Bum, bum, bum. Um, and honestly, for the most part, these are the only two lenses I pretty much ever use. I have a couple of other lenses that are in my bag just because they've been there forever. The handy dandy Is that kit a lens. Oh, it's an 18 to 55. The, the kit lens that comes with your very first digital camera that you buy in a kit. <laughs> I still have that, and you know what? Maybe once a year I pull that out because I just need a little bit more, and I'm not gonna buy a more expensive lens for something I use maybe once a year. See, that's very practical. So that's what, um, so a lot of people are like, oh, do I need to dump all my gear and go to mirrorless? No. And, I, and then I've got a friend who has the RP, and she's like, I need an R5. I'm like, why? Well, I guess she wants it. No, well, she does, but she doesn't. Um, she, I mean, she, Laquita. <laughs> oh, that's what I talked her say. out of it. I mean, she's got a lot to learn. She's, she's recently invested in a ton of equipment, lots of lighting gear. And I'm like, perfect your craft. Yeah, learn how and to use that first. And when you've reached the limitation of what you've got, that's when it's time to go. However, um, and and this, this is a great example of what I'm about to say. And I'm going to come in a little tighter, right? Um, I made the switch to mirrorless last year because I had an enormous amount of EF kit. I had two 5D4 bodies and a 5D3 body and seven EF mount lenses. 
And I knew that last year, before they discontinued the DSLRs, that I could get top dollar for those. So I did. I sold all of that equipment, came out of it at about 10 grand. I bought the R5 and two lenses. And since then, I've augmented with more lenses. But I made the switch strictly as a business move. I didn't want to wait until I could, that, until my equipment devalued to make the switch. Because how do you fund an entire switch of a whole system of yeah, gear, right? Yeah, it, it's, it's expensive. And that's why I say, if you're only going to use it every once in a while, just get the non-L series lenses. And, and I should mention, these uh, 24 to 105s are both L's, as obviously. Which is Canon's top-end glass, right? Right. And it does make a bit of difference in quality, I'm not going to lie, but honestly, if it's an image that I need to use, the 18, it's probably a really large group, usually, yeah. and I just have no more room to move back, and they're not going to order anything more than an 8x10, <laughs> so you're not going to be able to, it's fine. It's fine. It's <laughs> fine! That's what she's saying. It's just fine, right? Right. And I, yeah, you're in the business of making money, so don't waste it all on gear that, that you're not going to use. That was really use. my point, is I made the transition based on, uh, because uh, honestly, I love my 5D4s. Those are my favorite bodies of all times. But I didn't want to get caught holding equipment that I couldn't get the value out of to move into the, into the next thing. And I'm in my third generation of Canon lens mounts, okay? I started with the FD series, then the EF series, and now I'm into the RF series. And I, I'm lock, stock, and barrel. I don't own any EF mount gear. But I was going to say, I didn't keep one for my EOS 1V, which takes the EF lenses. Yeah, since I screwed up and sold them all. Since my backup is the EF mount, I have to have it for yeah. one. But um, I'm kind of, I don't change out my gear very often. I keep it a very long time. I mean, I had, I had, had, had my previous camera for seven or eight years. Yeah. I... I like my cars. I buy them with little mileage, <laughs> new or then, little mileage. Then drive the wheels and dri off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so my next lens up, it's just a, it's a Canon. It's just a straight 20 millimeter. And I bought this one way back in the beginning when I was shooting a crop sensor. And I needed just a little extra because, you know, a crop sensor, it doesn't, you know, I might have a 24. Anyway, I just have never gotten rid of it. It's still in my bag. The, um, Honestly, don't know the last time I ever used it. Well, you know, that would fit my EOS 1V that doesn't have a lens. I'm not sure what I'd do with a 20 millimeter. Yeah, Shoot I a mean, lot of really wide stuff. <laughs> I, I use it once in a blue moon, literally. Right. Um, one thing I should mention, I personally, and this is dirty right That's now. It's really, really scuzzy. Yeah, well, <laughs> I don't know. This is the EF. I haven't used this lens yeah. for... Because you favor the RF lens, huh? Yeah, yeah. If I, I mean, I might as well use the RF. But I put filters on everything. And this is when I was a kid and in photography, we did this. Because if you break, if you drop it, you're more likely to break the filter first. That is my main reason for doing it. And it helps protect the lens okay, so itself. So I every single... have a completely different strategy on that. I know you, you're not a, a filter guy. I'm, I'm not going to take. Okay, so let's let's take my 85-12 DS. That's a $3,100 lens, and I'm going to put a $60 filter. I'm going to go big time, put a $200 filter in front of my $3,000 lens, and I'm going to automatically be losing light. So I'm no longer a 1.2. Yeah, but I'm, how often do you really need that 1.2? It, and if you're in that situation, you could pull the filter off real quick. So you could. So I am a huge advocate for lens hoods. A I lens hood is going to give you great bump protection. Neither way is wrong. I okay? use the lens hoods I'm, too. Yeah. Um, it's I'm just... A, all, um, all the time. In the studio, you know, out of the studio. 30 or 40 years, I was taught way back when you put a filter on there, you protect that, and I, well, I will and, forever and do that. And 30 or 40 years ago, it was film, and you needed a UV filter. Uh, yeah, and these are just skylight or UV. Uh, they probably all have one a little different. Yeah, this one's got a UV. Yeah. Um, I think this one's a skylight. So I'm really but big about single. color consistency, so I'm all in the L series because the color science is all the same. And then I don't add filters in front of them because I don't want to change the color science. It's just I'm so nerdy about that very thing. But well, I think your advice is sound. So I carry a handful of filters in my bag. If I'm shooting in a sandy environment, dunes or beaches, 
if I'm shooting um, aquatics, pool stuff, ocean, anything yeah. that could potentially, if I'm shooting chemistry, I shot a, um, a pharmaceuticals plant. Um, you bet I had those with me. I wasn't sure if I was going to be exposed to any kind of... Uh, it's just better to be Custom safe chemicals than sorry. Like that. So, anyway. I mean, I'm not, I do take advice. them off every once in a while, but for the most part, they're always on, and I just keep them really clean, except for that one that's not been used. And if I were going to use it, I would clean it, I promise. <laughs> um, okay, so I also have multiple, I'm just kind of pulling off the top here. No, it's good. I, I really like multiple it. Multiple chargers. I've got one for each of my cameras. Well, I mean, really. They're the same charger. This one says 6D on it because I've had it since I bought the 6D. Yeah. It came with it. So, so your 6D and your R6 both use the LP E6 same, batteries. Yes, same batteries. And then if you which go to the new really NH nice. batteries, they are so much better. So, um, yeah, so I have uh, battery chargers that are always with me in my bag, mm -hmm. plus uh, one in my studio and one at my house. So, I never am going to have a problem with not having a battery I charger. I carry two in my bag. I've got a double up here. There's always chargers to be yeah, had. Yeah, it's just terrifying. If I'm on location, there's chargers uh, to, to do that. Um, this is my backup camera, the 6D. Nothing special. When, when was the last time you used it? June. Uh, the last time I used it was at my mom and dad's 50th anniversary party because I had just bought this but didn't have time to actually mess with Figure it. Figure out so how to use it. I'm like, we, <laughs> it's a big event. We better make sure that that's done right. Yep. So I have that. Um, I love that we're accumulating this all on the desktop here. It's, <laughs> it's perfect. Okay, so the next uh, big thing that I would say that I have in my pack is I oh, have... Oh, you've got to flee these 600EX. I do because... Um, I used to, well, events and weddings, I, yeah, I've got three of the 600 EX. We'll put these out. Yeah, I actually, uh, I Throw love this. these. I have found that the Yangnuo version of this flash is great. Yeah, it, and you know what? Yangnuo wasn't really around when I bought when these. So. Those look like they've been used. Oh, yeah, these have been to every wedding and event I've photographed in the last. These are years. fantastic. Uh, I mean, and these were migrated from, I had 580 EXs. Okay, and you then have I, a 480 or something in there. I do, I think I but I don't even list. know the last time I used it. I, in fact, I I wouldn't recommend buying it. It's kind of, in my opinion, I really like, I love these, and this yeah. is just not worth it. And I just, when KEH was in town recently, I just did, forgot to take this, or they'd have it. Um, but yes, <laughs> these are, I, so yeah, so I have three of so those. So you know what I like about speed lights? And um, if, if you follow uh, what we do, you know that I'm, I'm big into uh, the Godox system. Okay, I'm, I'm deep, deeply entrenched in that. My speed lights are V1s in the Godox system. My studio lights are 100s, 300s, and 400s. Um, <clears throat> and all kinds of modifiers to go with them, and I've got a lot of stuff moved into their direct mount, which fits the 300s and 400s natively, and mm -hmm. instead of the big S mount, it's a fraction of the size. But I'll tell you what I love about a good speed light like these is the fact that you can zoom the head. All right, so I was recently involved with photographing a group. I wasn't the photographer, and the photographer whipped out their, their light, and they're like, oh, crap, I forgot my 300. All I have is the 100. Well, the 100 has a zoom head. So guess what, when you zoom your head, you concentrate the light. You magnify or intensify the light. Right. So that's what these are really great for, is you can shoot and, and hit and, and get some broad light in a room, or if you need to get some reach on it uh, and some power out of it, these 600s well, are great lights. And one thing I like about them, um, if I'm doing an event, or really even if I'm out on location doing a senior portrait, I, like, I have this little, it's a DEMB, D-E-M-B flash adapter. I am personally really big into bouncing light. Yeah, bounce, bounce. Um, so the if video. I need to use, I don't know, a wall over here or mm -hmm. the ceiling or whatever, this just helps me direct that light a little bit better. And it's so I'm so it's so intuitive to me now. I wouldn't even I don't realize I'm doing it, but if I don't if I forget my dim flash. I feel lost. So my God. So that's so. For me, just I love like, this thing. I don't even know if they make them anymore. Like <laughs> DIY almost. Um, you could, yeah. I've, so I teach uh, the One Light Workshop, and I do that almost every year. And one of the things that we teach in the workshop is 
bouncing your flash. I'm like, so concrete or white walls or gray walls or if you can't find a gray wall in the, in the wild or a, a white ceiling in the wild or concrete in the wild, you're not paying attention to your surroundings because you can make a gorgeous speed light in the hot shoe, rotate it off, portrait that looks phenomenal. Right, and like I said, um, you know, the fact that you can bounce it and direct it to yep. where you want it That's to go. That's just brilliant. Um, I just love that, and I don't know, I just came across it years ago online. I'm like, I have got to have that, so, so all the I've new always stuff, had like one in my the, pack. The stuff for my V1 is all magnetic, and it's got just, it just psh, drops it right on. Well, I've had this a good 10 years. The, the last, or the Velcro's getting worn out, so nowadays... I have the handy <laughs> gaff tape, tape, and I just tape it down, and that it's, it's not coming off. <laughs> so I, oh, I always have gaff tape in, um, so I use it for that. But in my lighting kit, which is coming up, I have the yellow gaff tape because I marked the Do you the have, like, X. skinny gaff tape and, and wide gaff tape here? Is yes. what, what happened here? Yes. Um, this is something, my husband works in TV news, and this is something that they do there. And All honestly, right, let's, let's you do can... This. We're gonna just <laughs> You don't always need a wide. So how do you get the wide off? Well, on this particular roll, you can't because I've used this more. But okay. ideally, you would be using a combination of these. So then you just have to pull off a little bit, and you have wide. Okay. But I've for, never seen this before, and it's fabulous. It's uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just something. I don't know if we could. Anyway, that's something I've done for years because of my husband. He did it, had his work, and he started it with me when he was helping I think that's, me one that's time. Terrific. Um, okay, so those lights. You've got a lot more crap in your bag, and we don't have a lot of time left. I'm going to put got, this back I'll up. I'll just hold out. Pop us in the corner. I've got, and I'm just going to let you go. I'll stop the commentary. Okay. I got talking about tripods. Don't get Bob <laughs> talking about tripods. I've got many, many filters uh, polarizer, cross light, uh, 82A, close ups. Lots of filters. So your close-ups, are those like, uh, like tubes or to what? To help you if you wanted to do just a little extra oh. macro work. Well, they're little magnifiers. Little magnifiers, mm. yeah. Um, I don't use them very oh, okay. often, but yeah, they look like old Coke glass uh, glasses. I can, is that like, <laughs> oh, that totally has that effect. Yeah. Wow. It's Yeah, it just zooms in. That's heavy. Yeah, I mean, these are probably originally to film, and they, anyway, yeah, yeah good stuff. Old, old stuff. I um, love your mix of, of like, ultra-modern and not ultra-modern, oh, right? I, I've been around for a while, so I have. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, you look a lot younger than I think you yeah, probably are. Yeah, I, I, I am a lot younger than, or a lot older than people think I am. I wish I were younger. Um, no, you don't. Younger sucks. Uh, 30, 30 on up. I'm, well, 30s are good. Okay. Um, rechargeable batteries. This is just bare minimum of what I have in here right now. Would cover these. And those are. Let's just take a minute on them. These um, are the these, Enloop blacks. Um, yeah. And then I happen to date when I get them all. Um, since these are black, I put white tape on them. In fact, because black sharpie doesn't work. <laughs> black sharpie doesn't work. <laughs> there are I date extra, my batteries also. Extra batteries for the cameras in here. I like those boxes. Those. Um, this is a ProMaster. Just, um, I like the battery That's box. just how they came, so I kept them in okay. there. Okay, all right. Um, for the speed lights, I do have these when I pull out the speed lights, some umbrella adapters on there. So that's just my main camera bag, but if I were to go out um, an event or a portrait shoot, <laughs> <laughs> I have this. I have a backpack that I bought this on Etsy. Pretty. I mean, I really like the the vibe going on here. It's like denim and leather. Yeah, so and it's a oiled canvas. Oh, I love um, it. With nice some thick leather. pads on the back. Right. This and was an Etsy purchase. It was on Etsy. Wow. It's yeah, just some guy that makes camera bags. So there's access to the top, which right now has my. I do old school and I still do an old school day planner plus I have everything Oh, in you're Google. making my wife's day right there. Yeah, I, I do Google too, but if electricity or my battery on my phone dies, I always have that is, my... That is, so I run... Or a, I'm talking on the phone and I run a I pet folio too. It doesn't have a calendar in it, uh, but my wife is like planner central. She loves that. I'm surprised she's not commenting right now about that. This backpack can also 
keep my laptop. There's a little slot Can in here. Can we have that in a clear case? It is a clear case, yeah. I love the stuff people bring on our <laughs> show. So, laptop's there. Um, I wonder if they if make I a clear it. case for my XPS. Uh, they probably do. Is that like an Amazon kind of thing? Um, yeah, I brought it's Pro Case. Okay. I bought it on Amazon. Uh, so the bottom port, this actually can be configured on, however I want it a little closer. to be. Right now, it's configured if I were to have a one camera, one lens. I would keep the the speed lights up on top okay. if I were walking out. Um, I can access it from this little front section. I see you have more batteries in there too. Yes, more batteries, pens, lens cleaners, uh, computer adapter, yeah. card adapter. Um, this part's got things like Tylenol gum, lens pen cleaner. I love my lens pens. I don't know how you sanitizer. clean your lenses, your lenses, but my lens pens are my favorites. Eye, eye drops, I have really dry eyes. Dramamine, because I have a condition where I get dizzy easily. <laughs> um, but yeah, this I, I use it every day. It's got all kinds of, a water bottle can go here. Right now it's got my car keys um, right here. Keep my money with me. Nice, got the cards um, and the wallet and all that. But it's great because it's a backpack and it distributes the weight. Yep. On both. Yeah, as opposed to just having a, a single strap bag, which gets really heavy and uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable on the shoulders yeah. and the neck. And it's it's hard on you. So I, I switched to backpack, oh, about two years ago. Um, so now I have two lighting kits that I did not bring. I have the... And I've got slides for these. So, so I'll just uh, I'll get them up here. Okay, so the studio lighting kit. Um, Can you see that? Sorta, sort but of. I pretty much so know what just, I have. Okay, oh, so there, there we go. Yep. Um, so I've got two, I use two Alien B 1600s as my main and fill, um, and they have Godex soft boxes on them. One has a 47 inch Octabox, and the other has that 32 by 48 Octabox. Um, and I use radio poppers for my transmitter and mm -hmm. receiver in the studio, and that's because Way back when, I used to use the radio poppers on the Canon 600s um, to talk to each other, and I don't use those anymore. But um, anyway, then my uh, hair lights or background lights, depending on what I decide they're going to be, are a photogenic 163s. And they have, well, it depends on what I'm doing, but a lot of times they just have the Photo DX soft box on them, which is a 12 by 56. Okay, wow. Well, I like a, a really tall yep. one because it covers a lot of body. I have those same ones. Yeah. So, and yeah, so those are in the studio all the time. I, I use Norman light stands. I mean, some of them. I I've, mean, Norman, that's like, you're talking old school. Yeah, I, I've had them a long time. Long time. Yeah, so I mean, if you buy quality, the stuff lasts a long time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, there, there are times to use it. So I have quite a few Norman light stands and Talon light stands. I haven't um, heard of the Talon brand before. Uh, yeah, Just I think they were. I think they were bought out. I think they bought out Photogenic, if I remember properly. Okay. I might be wrong on that. Could be. But yeah, way out. Um, Talon stands and. Um, You've I got also, an eyelighter knockoff. Yeah, I have a knockoff variety. I mean, it was like a hundred bucks, and it, yeah, it does the, the job. Yeah, because the is like three hundred bucks. Right, and that's another I know, area there's one sitting where I'm like, feet. do I need to spend three hundred dollars no. on this? And no. When I bought my eyeliner, there were no knockoffs. Yeah, I wouldn't buy it. Because and now they have a version was, two, and I'm like, mm, no. Oftentimes, if you think you need it right now, if you wait a little while, there'll be a knockoff. So just wait. You can <laughs> like seriously, just wait. Um, you know what? That eyeliner is a problem solver. It can be. Sometimes, like, it's just big and it takes up a lot of space. It is huge. It, it literally, you, they can't see this. I was going to try and go back to camera two. Let's try that. Um, in front, so the eyeliner is huge. It's probably five feet wide. Yeah, it's, yeah. And it's, it's curved. definitely my hand And it's in squat. front of our table because that's big. the only place I can start big curved anything. Um, because it it's a round table. It does give great wrap around light, not going to lie. I love um, that. And, and like if I need to fill the chicken under. model, to yeah. Blah, blah, blah. yeah, if I need to fill that, yeah, that works Yeah, great. women love that. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, uh, you photograph somebody maybe in their 60s. and um, I say 40 on up. They pretty much well, love it. Well, yeah, that's true. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I um, use something a little gentler. Uh, so let me ask you, silver or white? 
Um, I'm using silver on the, the eyeliner. I like okay. silver. I do have a gold reflector, and I know some people are really anti-gold reflector. That's me. But I've had this gold reflector, I don't know, since the 90s. And I when like, gold reflectors were popular? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if they made silver back then. I think you had gold or white. But I like it because every once in a while, it just adds a little warmth. So Sunbounce, the company, makes a reflector. It's, it's white or silver with gold strands in it. And it's exquisite. It's expensive. It's like 500 bucks. Yeah, no. For like a five-in-one or a three-in-one or just a one, but it's sweet. But I get what you're saying. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like you want I, to give somebody a little bronzing tan, use your gold reflector. Yeah, some people just need a little Oof. little warmth. Oof. So I have that, and I bring it in when needed. You know, if I've got, yep. yeah, like someone like my husband who is very fair. He definitely needs that. All right, I need to bring this that. back. And uh, so you're still on the studio kit? Studio kit. Um, so let me see. We went through main fill. Oh, I have all kinds of back. I have two walls that are backdrops. And I... And I, I del you sent a whole list of all your backdrops, and I just went, psh, two walls of backdrops. Yeah, two walls of backdrops. I have canvases in as large as 10 by 8. Canvases, paper, ultra cloth. Oh, yeah, uh, freedom cloth, actually. Freedom cloth. Yeah, I, I have all exactly kinds of about. stuff. I think I gave most of my freedom cloths either to Laquita or somebody else. I just don't use them in my headshot photography. But we Every use them all the time when we were doing other... Well, things, they travel they nicely, too. And, yeah, they, yeah, they I have one up, in my right? car right now that we needed. Anyway, uh, tons of backdrops. Uh, so I think, and of course, all kinds of different modifiers for those lights, barn doors and snoops. And okay, you said modifiers, so where are you from? <laughs> I'm from Montana, and my husband tells if he's watching, he makes fun of me all the time. I apparently have you a Montana. A Midwestern. You got a little Midwestern in there. A, a Montana accent, it's, yeah. I, it was in modifiers. <laughs> Say it again. Modifiers? <laughs> <laughs> now she's thinking about it. I'm sorry, I should have bags, done. not whatever. Say it again. Bags. Like, do you need a bag? Like a B-A-G, maybe? Like, how does that I go? I don't know. That's just how we <gasps> I love it. said it. I'm from Boston. I don't <laughs> sound like I'm from Boston. I spent too many years in the military, and then I spent a lot of, a lot of years on that left coast. Um, I just don't have that accent anymore. Unless I go back there, and then for like three weeks after, I'm talking Boston. <laughs> well, certain things have never left me. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, modifier is one of them. Um, um, so I think that pretty much covers the studio. Great, but then so I have let's a, get into your on, travel kit. I have an on-location travel kit for when I'm doing headshots. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know, I have lots and lots of lighting, guys. And you just have to buy what's best for you. For a long time, I actually would tear the studio apart oh, I know. and then travel. And honestly, until about a month ago, I didn't have a on location. Yeah. But anyway, so. Ha so uh, if you're a studio photographer and you get to that point where you don't have to tear your studio apart to, to take that location work. Oh, uh, I mean, it's like an hour in it on each end to set you up. You know what? And it's less tear, wear and tear on your gear and it's less wear and tear on yourself and it's time saved, time spent with family, time doing books or time doing whatever else you want to do besides tearing down and setting up. Right. It's one of the reasons we expanded our studio this year to incorporate this video set and next to us I have our portrait set where we do our headshot work and our, and our group I mean, composite work. Honestly, that whole theory of your time is worth money, I mean, that's the whole reason I ended up move, getting my own studio. It's like traveling my stuff elsewhere to set up a studio oh, somewhere. It's, it's hard. I was borrowing a studio, and it, it just it wasn't working. That's um, real world. That's, real, that's, that's very real world. Like, in our, in, in, our, in our unique, I don't know if our business is that unique, but, uh, you know, mechanics don't generally set up a shop and then go somewhere else and work, right? Not typically. Not typically. You might have a mobile guy and he's got a, a truck outfitted with his mechanic stuff, like his tools and all that, but. That is true, we have a, a pretty mobile business. I mean, we have to have a specific uh, yeah. license, or not license, insurance just for the traveling. Um, yeah, so, and yeah, I need it's... to get an insurance person on here to have that very conversation. Yeah, if uh, you don't have insurance on your equipment that covers you in your business location plus right. wherever you may be. And, and just so you know, it's the Inland Marine policy that covers you outside your doors. Yes. Inland Marine. And you, you have to have that. 
it, you, it's just saving your hind. Yeah, and then on top you of that, know. you know, if, you, if you're a PPA member, you're a PPA member? Yes, so they um, have the, the... They've got, and they've just, last year, just redid their insurance policies. Terrific insurance through PPA, worth the money that you're spending just alone for the membership. Right. Um, although there's a great education track there, too. I'm yes. excited about that. Um, so we're noon. We've been going for a solid hour. I'll um, make it let's fast talk about unless your, you want to stop. Let's, nope, um, I'm not going to stop. We're going to so, blast straight through your kit. Here it goes. So my on-location kit is all Flashpoint gear, which is the Godex. Uh, it's the American version of Godex. It's, so it's it Godex brand sold by Adorama. Right. So that's it comes it with a U.S. warranty, and yep. that's why I bought it. So I had a U.S. warranty. I can talk to someone here if I have a problem. Yep. Um, so I carry that all in a big talon bag that... I got on an is eBay. Is that the one you brought with you? Uh, no. That's a different bag. That's a different bag. Um, but there is a that. photo of it somewhere. Um, I, so I have two of the 400 flashpoints and two of the 200s. Um, each of them I'm using, I've got the adapter on so that they have the Godex mount mm -hmm. uh, so that I can quickly interchange. The Bowen's S mount. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, it's not that adapter thing. It actually goes on yep. the, uh, I That can't. one's wearing it. Yes, yeah, the that. The so I've got it on each of the lights so I can move those modifiers between all three if I need yep. to. Um, then I also have, uh, so the God, I don't know, is that on the Good screen on. now? What's that? Uh, yeah, I, this, they're seeing this. They're okay. seeing this screen right here. So I've for the main and fill, I've got an Octobox soft box, and then for the hair or background, I've got a barn door set up for those. That also comes with a filter pack. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I always have gaff tape. I use yellow when I'm on location, so I can put a yellow X on the floor, and my people can see where to stand. I've got. Like two different colors. Yeah, because black can blend into a lot of carpets. Yep. Um, and it depends on what background they want, but I, I usually have a seamless with um, two light stands and a crossbar. So I, I carry quite a few light stands with me. And yes, I could have less, but I, I have so many lights. Well, and stands. you know what? The, the, the day you get out there and you go to put your thing up and something blows out, the threads blow out or whatever on your stand. It happened at convention. Somebody was setting up for one of the classes and their stand blew up. And yeah, I'm like, things. here's an A clamp and now it works, right? But now you, think, now you need to stand. Which I do carry clamps with me to every shoot. Um, well, sometimes, it, it, there's just so many reasons <laughs> to take them. Sometimes you need to clamp somebody's clothes. They're wearing something too big and you need oh, to make their I, clothes I did fit. that yesterday. So, yeah, I, I mean, the clamps I, I had are awesome. Ladies, I had three ladies in the studio yesterday, uh, Legacy Navigation Services, uh, in the studio yesterday for group composite work, and um, two of the ladies sharing a shirt, and um, not at the same time, right? <laughs> but, but one of the, uh, this, like, very tall, slender gal um, puts the shirt on, and it just feels boxy on her. Just went around the back, rolled it up, put a plastic clip. Yeah. on it and now the shirt fits just fine yep. so you ha you sent me this picture and I'm going to bring this on this is how you get your stuff yes, in, right? in and so out so the building that my that studio up. is in I'm on the second floor so okay. I'm going up and down an elevator and I'm you know sometimes having to walk a block and a half to get to my car Oh wow! Um, because our, our loading dock area is well, there's construction next door, so I can't use it. So I have this rolling cart, and it can fit the talon bag, which you can see on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that is my light stand bag, which I do have that with me empty with no stands in it. But you said that's locally made. Yes. I had that custom made a number of years ago at Buck's Bags, which mm -hmm. is downtown. Um, and I went in, and I said, hey, I need a bag to, at the time, it was to carry that heavy tripod and lights. This is when I first started weddings before I had speed lights. Old, you'd have to take in some photogenic, you know, power lights and plug <laughs> I know the what you're hope, about. hope for electricity in the church. But anyway, um, so I took in the gear that I wanted to fit in that bag, and they came up with a custom design. And um, that's incredible. Let me. So, uh, We'll Let start out, it's, so it's it's really long. It fits all of my, I have all 12 foot light stands. So it's really long. That's this brilliant. is, it's got a strap, but this is actually the back part. And this was the gal's idea. And I haven't used this feature in a long time, but she built in backpack straps. Wow. So that if I needed. So you could really burden your photo assistant. 
I, or myself. <laughs> but yeah, these will clamp down there. And if awesome. I needed to carry this and yeah, and I was by myself, then they could go into backpack mode. But usually I just have them on that cart. Amazing. Um, and honestly, I've been thinking about going and having another bag made because I could certainly <laughs> customize this more. But at the time, this all seemed like all I needed. Um, <laughs> open it up. And there are some straps to go around and hold oh, everything hold in tight. That's extraordinary. Which I usually don't use because I'm just going car to cart. Yeah. But if I were doing that backpack mode, I definitely would want to use these. Um, and then there is a zipper pocket. And this is where I would make some changes. Okay, so this slow is down a here super for a minute. long. This is Buck's Bags and Boise made this for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, and yes. it's right on top of your mic, so we're probably oh, killing them Oh, I'm sorry. There. Actually, your mic's up higher, so. Uh, yeah, and so there is a pouch where I can put extra stuff in, Super cool. be it um, umbrellas, clamps, gaff tape, cords, what, whatever. Cool. Um, yeah, so it, you know, there are times to spend some money and get something customized, and I, I don't remember how much this cost. Oh, here's their logo. Ooh, <laughs> let me see. Oh, well, that's tiny. Let me. Let's bring in a different camera here. I'm gonna pop it in. Boom. Like, I can't Bucks see bags. anything. Let's see. You know, she's, <laughs> you've got that right in front of your face. Bucks bags. That's the logo. There, you saw it here first. <laughs> so anyway, um, you can have anything you want. They make all kinds of custom bags. Just go in there, and they'll uh, you talk about what you want, and they drop a prototype and say, "What do you think?" That's brilliant. So and this they is give for you a price this is for Katrina. Go to Bucks bags and have them make covers for your photo booth units. I just yeah, sold my photo I'm, booth to Katrina, and I always wanted custom covers for it to protect it. Bucks Bags in Boise. Yeah. yeah, and then you're staying There's local. There's some New York coming out right there. <laughs> Bucks Bags in Boise, I was born in New York. So, um, all right, so listen, um, amazing, astounding. I know that there are people that are gonna be like, rewind, replay, over and over just to see all this great stuff that you... Um, well, like I said, oh, my biggest thing is by, you don't have to have a lot to be a good photographer because you are the person well, that's creating is, it. This is an accumulation. Yes, I right? mean, so I've me been in How, the business for that's years. What I was ask. So, How long have you been an active photographer? Actively a photographer since I was about 10 years old. So I won't say how many, that, well, what, yeah. It would be like 38 years. <laughs> <laughs> I've been an active photographer. So and you're of course, 73, baby? <laughs> 74. 74, Just okay. barely a right. 74, but cool. yeah, my 74. wife's a 73. Um, I had a truck a, that was built the same year my wife was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I am, like we talked, I'm older than I look. Thank you, That's Dad, for thing, the good right? genetics. Thanks for good genetics. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, this stuff, it's not like I went out one day and I bought all three of these speed lights at the same time. Right, because they're I, five or 600 bucks a piece. Yeah, I probably, I don't even remember how I did it. I probably bought one, and I'm like, yeah, that's pretty nifty. Let's get a second one. Then I'm like, oh, that's just not enough. I've well, got to get a That's just the bomb.com, all right. <laughs> And a lot of what I have is like backups too. Like yeah. if one dies, then I've got a backup. And that, yeah, that's from the weddings. Like that, oh my God, what if something happens? You have to have yeah, more. Yeah, so anytime you're shooting a once in a lifetime event, you have to have the redundancy. Yes, yeah, so they at the very they least. They send spaceships into space with double and triple redundancy. Yeah, so at the uh, very least have two bodies, two lenses. Even if they're exact same lens. Yeah. You gotta have that's, two lenses. That's gospel. I know, but a lot of people don't you just, do that. You just preach that right here. <laughs> well, like, I don't know, for you I, that you go know, out without uh, it, I don't know how you A do frequent it. post, um, I participate in the Real Estate Photography Forum on Facebook, and it's a great forum, but it is not uncommon once a week somebody posts, they got to their location and don't have a memory card in their camera. I'm yes. like, well, you solve that a variety of ways. You carry spare memory cards, they're always in your bag, they never leave your bag. Exactly. You take your memory card out of your camera, you put a fresh memory card in before you right take away. that memory card off to go do something else. My answer was just grab your spare camera. You could do that too. Oh, I don't use a spare. So let me get this straight. You drove an hour and 15 minutes. You have a homeowner and a realtor and maybe the broker, oh, and the loan officer, all waiting for this stuff to happen. And oops, my camera broke and you don't have a plan, that's not pro. Well, and honestly, I, I've only had one instance where I re 
maybe I've had more, but I only remember one specifically where something weird, I was getting a weird error message on the back of my camera. I didn't have time to figure it out. I was at a wedding. Grab the other camera. Yeah, exactly. Just grab the other one, move on. So one of the things that I found helpful um, is to have two of the same body. Um, it is helpful, it, but that's... And, and it's not always been that way for me. I don't have that right now. Right? Yeah. I have an R and an R5, and they are totally... They're the same but different, right? Um, I will eventually add another R5, so the location work is just... It, they're set the same. Every single menu setting is set the same, and they perform the same. And they have the same firmware, and, and same, 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 all the way across the board. I mean, that is but ideal, but I mean... It's optimum. Right. I, I am a perfect example of someone who's out there shooting two different bodies. And I've done I, I very I, rarely I have years. to pull out my spare. Usually, I mean, my spare is basically my old camera yep. that is now my spare. That, and, that's um, a, and that's a very logical way to do that, right? The only downside to what you're doing here is that you're in two lens mount systems. Yes. Meh. But, Not a big deal. But since I pretty much only use two lenses for everything anyway, you're fine. I'm fine. Yeah. I mean, I, as you can see from all of my list, most of my money is in lighting. Stro yes, it you is. Know, speed lights and strobes <laughs> and backgrounds. I have quite a bit invested in backgrounds in the studio so itself. So can I, can I come to a studio tour with my, uh, with my DJI gimbal and, and yeah, we'll just do, shoot, some, say, shoot some video? I was going to say, you should start doing studio tours of... In my spare time. Yeah, well, <laughs> I just well, I would love to do studio tours. And uh, in the beginning, uh, Sam did a couple and it was a lot of fun. Um, I would love to do that and just shoot uh, something that we could play during an episode or, or maybe just create some studio tour videos that we can upload separately, not as a live kind of thing. Well, if and you come to my building, you can get Alan and I <laughs> it's in a one twofer. stop. It's a twofer. It's a twofer. But I think the great thing about that is you, people, like I'm always trying to find images or videos of other people's studios. You don't have to have a really elaborate studio to put out quality work. Yeah, I yeah. mean, mine is not, no, my studio's not that nice. But <laughs> it's got the location it's I need. Yours. It's mine. It's a space outside of my house. Yeah. The price is right. You know, I had to hire a guy to put a work. door in to have the space outside my house. <laughs> well, I mean, but it's at my house, but it's not in my house, right? Yeah, and, and you don't have to have something super fancy, be it your studio or your gear, yep. to create quality work. And I think that's, I don't know, that's just a, a thing that I've always gone with is. Uh, spend money when you need to. Yeah, you know, go ahead and spend two thousand dollars on a lens, but know that you're going to be using that lens for a long time, because like in the beginning, I would buy cheap uh, transmitters and receivers, yep. and I'm uh, at some point when I'm replacing them every six months because they break. I'm like, why don't I just buy the more expensive one? Yeah, I've already paid for it. So there are instances it's just worth spending more money. It is. All right, so do you mind if we transition now? You, you, yeah, I think we covered it all. The only thing I didn't mention, and it's down here somewhere, I uh, custom white balance every single shoot I do okay. with the PhotoVision white balance card. Okay. And like I said, it's down here somewhere, but it's the uh, card that's got gray, white, and black, black on it. And so I have a couple of white balance cards. I used them a lot when I was doing Well, I use them for architecture for sure. Um, and one thing that you need to know is there's often different white balances all the way through a space. Yes. So that's really important. That's really helpful to know. Um, and you can shoot images just based on the white balance in those different spaces. Even if you don't move the camera, at least you can blend those anyway. It's, I, I have yeah. white balance cards too. In the studio, I have a um, it's studio. I have a well, I'm studio. Set. You have to. Right. Yeah. I'm set. Um, but yeah, if you're doing it outside and you move from shade to sun, you so need to rewhite balance. Let's talk about professional photographers of Idaho. So, how okay. long have you been a member? <laughs> I've actually only been a member. Well, I was a member in the past for a year, but I've only been a member for one year. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, welcome. I'm glad you're. I've been a member of here. Montana when I was in college, okay. and then I moved here, and I well, just well. And you wasn't. have a degree in I photography. I do have a bachelor of arts in photography, and uh, another photographer high up in PP. They was like, but it's a bachelor of arts. It doesn't. Mine was actually. It should have been a, a bachelor of science. Ours was actually a pretty technical degree. It's just we happened to be. It's a long story. The umbrella of our department was under 
another department that was the arts. Since I've left, they've changed it to a BS, but <laughs> you know. And when that's I was what it there, is. Right? I, it's a BA. <laughs> so yeah, we went over a lot of this technical stuff and lighting and, and whatnot when I was in college. So and then I just continued education. Tell me this. I'm going to throw this on the screen and then I'm going to put us in the corner. Nope, that just didn't work. All right, let's try that again. Um, tell me why you're back to professional photographers of Idaho. Uh, more f for me, to be honest, it's more the social aspect than anything else. Um, oh, I think you're speaking right to our audience. Because I, for education, as you know, I travel. I was in Washington earlier this year. Um, I go to Salt Lake quite a bit with Intermountain PP of A. I just reserved the hotel rooms for imaging. Yes, me too. <laughs> I want to make sure I have the hotel rooms. I think I'm getting I... a degree this year at imaging. That's so. cool. So, I, no, you are. You not think well, you are, I right? Sh I should be. <laughs> okay. Now, th if the stars are all aligned properly the way I think they are, I'm getting my photographic craftsman degree at imaging. Oh. I'm and, pretty excited about it. And we should probably mention, if anyone's out there watching, I mean, I have a bachelor. So PP of A has their degree system. Mm -hmm. Professional Photographers of America, and I took it. I've taken a slightly different route. I went straight from high school to college, sure. got a Bachelor of Arts, and now I am a PP of A member, and I do some of their education. But I've not been one to really, or at least so far, I, I haven't really cared about the PP of A degrees because I went a different route. Sure. So you got to do um, what's best for you, I, I guess so. is what I'm saying. And, and I think that uh, what you said, I'm going to come back to us here for just a minute. I think what you said makes a lot of sense. And there's a lot of folks that are like, well, why do that? And when I went and uh, I got my CPP, my Certified Professional Photographer, uh, through PPA, I learned a lot about PPA as an organization. And folks, you have to pick a channel. OK? You have to pick a channel. You have yeah. to pick a direction. And I want, uh, I love to teach. I do a lot of teaching. We do workshops here. I've taught at our state conventions. I, I, I'm teaching down. Uh, we've taught down in um, uh, Idaho Falls out in Shelley uh, for the camera club out there, the High Desert Photographers. I'm not sure I'm getting that right. That, that sounds uh, right. I'm I... teaching for the Magic Valley folks uh, coming up uh, in November. I love to teach, and eventually I want to teach at imaging. So my so PPA, plan, they, so PPA is a good is, route. It is a good route. And you know what? I've been teaching for them so long now that I happen to have earned the degree. Um, but that's my channel. That's where, what, I mean, that's my continuing education. Yes. Like, I, I don't want to sit on what I learned in the 80s. I've been shooting since the 80s. I don't well, want to sit on that. I want to continue to grow in what we're doing. So one of the things that PPI offers is that we are the state affiliate for PPA. We offer educational programming, but more importantly, we offer a community of photographers. Yes. Right? And yes. like you said, you joined for you. Yeah, the, the local organization, it was more just social. I'm a member of National for the continued education aspect and insurance. Those yep. are my, my personal top twos. Totally. Um, but so, you know, like I said, you gotta you gotta pick equipment that fits your uses. You have to pick your education and learning path that fits your purposes. Yep. Just because someone else did something or has something, that is not a reason to buy it. it, it I mean, that is never how I've done anything. Yeah. Uh, so, because I know a lot of people are like, "Well, what do you?" I'm sure you're online and people see a nice photo. I'm like, what did you do? What, what are your settings? What lens was that? Well, especially like, when they well, say what settings. I mean, every situation is so different. That doesn't mean anything. I did, uh, <laughs> I did call a guy out the other day. He made a great image on a, on a great, it was just a great image. And I said, I, I literally called him on the lens that he used. And he was like, yep. I mean, you can. A new thing, right? You can, like I said, use this cruddy. 50, I just I, bought one of those from Phil White. <laughs> I just bought one of these from Phil White last year. Oh, this one's at least 12 years old, so I'm pretty sure it's like the cruddy beginning version of it. Um, but if you had no other lens, you could do a whole shoot with this. Totally. You don't have to have this. I want to see what our, our people are saying, if there's any comments going yeah, on Yeah, sorry, there. we're running late. No, that's okay. 
Uh, my wife did comment uh, a while back when you were talking about your planner um, that planners are her jam, and they really are. I'll pop that up there just because it's my wife. Well, and on that, planners are note, my jam. Like I said, I do it because what if technology fails me? Yeah. I, yeah, you just don't know. All right, so. I've got to stop this thing. I know we went way over. This is like Sorry, freight folks. train, <laughs> right? But, Coming through. Oh, yes, yeah, some of this would probably just be easier to do a studio tour. So you just point, <laughs> let you know this, this, um, and that. So I, I think that sounds like a fun idea. Maybe after the beginning of the year, as things open up. I'm not going anywhere. Um, so we'll come. Well, I, I've <laughs> been asked uh, to do a program about garage studios because we've made a pretty mm. successful, profitable business out of our our space here. And there's a lot of people with questions about that. And, um, but it's great to see, my wife and I both love to see into other photographer studios. Yeah, so we'll come down, we'll have lunch in, on A Street somewhere, some great joint down there. And well, really, uh, Phil's just around the around corner. The corner. So I we mean, can, you like, could make a two shoot day a thing couple of it. like all three of you. Yeah. Boom, right? And you it's got cool that. to see, you know, like the way you've got your uh, backdrops stored, your paper ones that are smaller. I'm like, oh, that's kind of, I mean, that's. A nice idea. You know, yeah. you, you just see and little things. And that's just iron pipe. You'll see iron pipe everywhere in my studio. It's, yeah. uh, I use a lot of it. I we, we went with the commercial route with our last studio, and I've been able to continue to use a lot of it, but I love that storage tech method. Uh, uh, paper backdrops are intended to be stored vertically. Yes. Um, I otherwise, do have two that are up on rollers all the time, but they're being I, uh, right. used so Roll. often right. that, uh, um, yeah, I they're have, not You can't the, see it because the light's really bright, but I've got all my long ones. Uh, up there because I don't have tall enough ceilings, but they are supported all the way across because um, you're not supposed to start them horizontally. Anyway, listen, folks, uh, professional photographers of Idaho, today with Brenda Leap and her amazing kit and um, just some great conversation today, too. I really yeah. appreciate you coming in. And if anyone um, has some questions about anything in my kit, just find my website, leapphotography.com, and you can send me a... Don't like this again. Oh. Leap photography. Uh, just send me an email and I can tell you. See, if I do that, it's just like, oh, look, Bob Ryder photography. Well, I don't want anyone to miss yeah. me in a parking lot. I'm short and mighty. She's <laughs> uh, Compact is a word I used with a gal the other day, and she says, my dad says I'm sturdy. I'm like, well, I'm sturdy. I I'm not going to lie. I got... I, I, I'm a big girl. <laughs> I love it. All right, uh, folks, thanks for spending time with us today. I hope you catch us on the replay. If you do, please leave some comments and let us then know that you stopped in uh, to watch. Yes. We had more. I have more stuff planned. We're not going to get to it today. I'm just going to say goodbye. We'll see you next week. I do want to talk about next week's ep episode. Let me throw that up into the stream real quick. i drop that, bring this back, and I'm just going to close out on this, and we'll see you next week. Yes. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. All uh, right. There it goes. They're getting that.